What's up, everyone? Hope you're doing well. So today, I'm going to talk about something a little bit different, and I'm going to talk about Masterworks. I originally was going to make a video about this maybe a month, month and a half ago. I decided I was going to do it after watching Echoes from Above interview with one of the co-founders from Masterworks. I just wasn't happy with Echoes' questions or the co-founders' answers. He was real jittery the whole time, and something just seemed off. So I started doing the research and then decided against making the video. The reason being, Masterworks is extremely complex. I'm sure the people that wrote up the prospectuses probably have PhDs in finance because this stuff is very hard to understand. It left me with more questions than I was able to find answers. Then I seen Upper Echelon's video yesterday and I just thought he either did zero homework just talked to some dudes at Masterworks and pulled the whole crypto thing with a trust me, bro. I just felt the video missed a lot of important topics. I don't know if they were missed or just overlooked. So that made me want to make this video and at least do a breakdown and let people decide for themselves. The majority of the content in this video is taken directly from Masterworks own SEC filings directly out of their own prospectuses. And before I go any further, I want to make it clear, I am a fan of both Echoes from Above and Upper Echelon's content. By no means am I bashing them, mocking them, or disrespecting them by any means. I'm just expounding further on what they did so people can get to the bottom of this, because this is something people should really know. We see these masterwork ads all over the place, and yet no one's been able to give a real clear explanation or what Masterworks actually does. I do agree with Upper Echelon that the Plain Bagels video is probably the best Masterworks video out right now, but I also think there's a few important things that he missed as well. So in this video, I intend to go over the things that he missed and not repeat the same exact stuff. Since I've gotten the impression no one's actually read all the way through these prospectuses, I decided to. Now, the newest prospectus they have filed is Masterworks LLC 227, but the offering statement is not finalized yet. So I'm going a few um so I'm going a few paintings or LLCs back to uh 215 where we actually do have a finalized prospectus. So the first thing I want to talk about in the prospectus is Masterworks organizational structure. And this diagram right here represents the organizational structure and material relationships between us and Masterworks that will exist following this offering. So Masterworks IO LLC is at the top. Then underneath it, you have Masterworks Investor Services LLC. You have Masterworks Administrative Services LLC, Masterworks Gallery LLC. And then underneath that, you have Masterworks Cayman which is a segregated portfolio company in the Cayman Islands. So when you're dealing with Masterworks, you are dealing with five separate Masterwork entities, one of them being a foreign company operating outside of the U.S. in the Cayman Islands. All entities are Delaware limited liability companies, except Masterworks Cayman SPC, which is a Cayman Islands segregated portfolio company. Masterworks refers to our affiliate, Masterworks LLC, which owns the Masterworks platform at masterworks.com, which will facilitate online investment in connection with this offering and facilitate similar offerings for other companies. Scott W. Lynn, the founder and chief executive officer of Masterworks, has effective control over Masterworks. It should be noted real quick that Scott Lynn may have control over Masterworks but he is technically not the owner. He ended up selling majority control of Masterworks, I believe 82% to the Lynn Family Trust 001 a few years back. So he's just CEO. I will talk more about Scott later on in this video. Masterworks Investor Services refers to Masterworks Investor Services LLC, which conducts investor relation services. Masterworks Investor Services is not a registered investment advisor under the Investment Advisors Act of 1940. 
a registered broker dealer under the Exchange Act, or licensed under any state security laws, Masterwork Investor Services acts as an agent of Masterworks Administrative Services LLC, and all services performed by Masterworks Investor Services are covered by the Management Services Agreement, C Note 4. Masterwork Investor Services receives no compensation or reimbursement from the company or investors. Masterworks Administrative Services LLC or the administrator will operate the Masterworks platform and will perform management services for us and Masterworks Cayman pursuant to the Management Services Agreement. Masterworks Gallery refers to Masterworks Gallery LLC, which indirectly, through a segregated portfolio of Masterworks Cayman, owns 100% of our membership interest prior to giving effect of the offering. We intend to use a portion of the proceeds from the initial closing of this offering to contribute to a segregated portfolio of Masterworks Cayman to acquire the artwork. And if and to the extent such proceeds are less than the purchase price, Masterworks Gallery will advance to the segregated portfolio of Masterworks Cayman that will acquire the artwork any additional funds required to consummate the acquisition. The remaining net proceeds of the offering, together with any unsold Class A shares, if any, will be contributed to the segregated portfolio of Masterworks Cayman that will acquire the artwork and will be used as repayment of the advance and payment of the true up. The company intends to hold title to the artwork in a segregated portfolio of a Cayman's Island segregated portfolio company, Masterworks Cayman. The artwork will be the only asset of the segregated portfolio, and we will be the only shareholder of that segregated portfolio. A segregated portfolio company registered under the Cayman Islands company laws is a single legal entity which may establish internal segregated portfolios. Each portfolio's assets and liabilities are legally separated from the assets and liabilities of Masterworks Cayman Ordinary Account and are also separate from assets and liabilities attributed to Masterworks Cayman's other segregated portfolios. This means that a creditor of Masterworks Cayman will only be entitled to recover against assets attributed and credited to the specific segregated portfolio to which the contract is also attributed. The segregated portfolio of Masterworks Cayman holding title to the artwork does not intend to enter into any contracts or incur any liabilities except as may be necessary in connection with sale of the artwork. That was a lot, but it was important that we read through that. So this is what I've gathered. Masterworks connects investors to the art offerings. Masterworks Investor Services is just an intermediary between investors and Masterworks Admin. Masterworks Admin performs management services for Masterworks and Masterworks Cayman. They are the intermediary between investors and Masterworks Cayman. Masterworks Gallery indirectly owns 100% ownership or membership of the art being offered that is sitting in the SPC at Masterworks Cayman. Masterworks Gallery is sole shareholder of the art in the SPC. Masterworks Cayman holds title to the art, does not intend to have liabilities or borrow against the art, but technically can. These are the questions I was left with after reading this section. Can Masterworks Gallery borrow against the Cayman shares of the art being held in these SPCs? If so, do they? If yes, do they borrow to buy the art in advance of an offering? Who owns the art if Masterworks goes bankrupt? Masterworks Gallery or Masterworks Cayman? Why so many intermediaries? Why is so much protection needed? Instead of SPC in the Cayman Islands, why didn't Masterworks set up separate LLCs for the art? like real estate developers or others that want to segregate portfolio holdings? Does the SPC protect investors or masterworks? I'm not going to read the next section regarding the actual offering. The plain bagel already covered the most important part, which was the true up. The one thing I want to say about it that he didn't touch on, yeah, it's extremely deceptive because you're advertising $20 per share, but the cost is really only 18 something. The bigger issue I have with it is it's a way for Masterworks to actually delude investors without you actually knowing. You think you're paying $20 per share, which I guess technically is true. They're not lying because you're paying 
you're paying 18 something for the actual shares and the other dollar and some change is an administrative fee or whatever that goes to the administrator. The catch is the administrator doesn't actually get that money. At the end of the offering, they take that true up and it's actually paid in more shares of art. So Masterworks gets their 20%. They get the 1.5% per year that the artworks held. And then they also get the extra 8% in the true up. So the most important thing people need to realize about this section, you're being diluted with this whole true up thing. It's not just that they're charging you extra money. They're diluting your shares. Next, we're going to talk about the rights of the administrator and potential conflicts of interest. The obligation of the administrator to us are not exclusive. The administrator may, in its discretion, render the same or similar services as rendered to us to any person or persons whose business may be in direct or indirect competition with us. Pursuant to the Management Services Agreement, the administrator and its affiliates shall have the right to engage in the following activities and will be responsible for all incremental costs associated with such activities, including taxes. Rights to commercialize the artwork for the duration of the operations of our company. Display rights and the right to lend the artwork to museums, galleries, private entities, individuals, and the like. The right to lease the artwork to companies, private entities, and individuals. For such rights, the administrator will pay us a royalty of $10 per annum. The administrator will display or exhibit the artwork if and when the administrator reasonably believes that such display or exhibition would increase exposure, profile, and appeal of the artwork. In the event any revenues are generated from such activities, the administrator may choose to retain all or portions of such revenues. Masterworks may determine to sell the artwork without engaging a third-party intermediary, in which event the administrator would charge the buyer of the artwork a reasonable fee not to exceed the lowest publisher's buys premium charged by Sotheby's, Christie's, or Phillips in effect at such time. And just to show you, this is Sotheby's buyer's premium chart rates as of February 1st, 2023. So this is pretty new. Buyer's premium rate payable on the hammer price up to and including $1 million is a 26% fee paid to Sotheby's. Buyer's premium payable on the hammer price in excess of $1 million up to and including $4.5 million is 20%. Buyer's premium rate payable on the portion of the hammer price in excess of $4.5 million is 13.9%. So as we can see, Masterworks can make a ton of money selling this stuff privately instead of going through an auction house like Sotheby's. And this fee would be on top of all the other fees they would be getting, so it'd be a way for them to actually maximize profits. For this offering, for example, they're getting $264,000 in true-up fees, which is about 11% of the artwork. Then they get 20% of the profit interest when they sell the painting. So right there is 31%. Then they get 1.5% in management fees per year. So let's just say three years, for example. That's another 4.5%. So where are we at now? We're at 20, 31, 4.5. So we're at 355 then say you get another 20% on the sale, they can easily make 50% plus per painting. And then if they lease any of these paintings out, you need to factor that on top of their profit too. Now, as far as other conflicts of interest, Masterworks may at some point in the future seek to register to become a broker dealer and member of FINRA to enable it to earn transactional fees for trading the Class A shares or it may seek to earn administrative or other fees to recoup its costs associated with making a trading market available. Neither the board of managers, the administrator, or its members will be required to manage or administer our operations as applicable as their sole and exclusive function as they will have other business interests and will engage in other activities in addition to those relating to us. We depend on the administrator to successfully operate us. Their other business interests and activities could divert time and attention from operating our business. Our operating agreement contains provisions that limit remedies available to our investors against the board of managers, 
The management service agreement contains certain provisions that limit the remedies available to our investors against the administrator and its affiliates and us for actions that might otherwise constitute a breach of duty. Our operating agreement contains provisions limiting the liability of the board of managers and the management services agreement contains certain provisions limiting the liability of the administrator and its affiliates, which also reduce remedies available to investors for certain acts by such persons or entity. Scott Lynn, the chief executive officer of Masterworks, is an art collector and is able to control the activities of all of the Masterwork entities. Mr. Lynn is also the chief executive officer of our administrator. Mr. Lynn could have conflict between the business with his personal art collection and business with the Masterwork entities. Masterworks financial arrangements may result in misalignment between its interests and the interests of Class A shareholders. Although Masterworks will own 1,000 Class B shares, representing a 20% profits interest in our company, and will own Class A shares following the offering, Masterworks may eventually sell its shares. A Masterworks affiliate may invest in this offering, which creates a risk that such Masterworks affiliate will seek to execute a secondary offering that could make it more difficult to sell your shares. Masterworks and members of the board of managers and executive officers will have other business interests and obligations to other entities, including interest and obligations relating to the art industry. We are totally reliant on the administrator to maintain and sell the artwork and manage our administrative services. We do not plan to have employees or intend to maintain or generate any cash flow prior to the sale of the artwork. Accordingly, we are totally reliant on the performance of the administrator under the management services agreement to effectuate the decisions of our board of managers. We are totally reliant on the administrator to maintain sufficient capital resources to pay our fees, costs, and expenses. Although we believe the administrator has sufficient capital resources and sources of liquidity to perform its obligation under management services agreement for the foreseeable future, there can be no assurance that the administrator will be able to maintain sufficient capital to satisfy its obligation in future periods. Representatives of registered investment advisors introduced to you through the Masterworks website are dedicated to selling and or advising on Masterworks securities and have conflicts of interest. And these are the main takeaways I got from reading all this. If Masterworks finds a commercial deal that's profitable, they can just refuse to sell the artwork and keep collecting fees from the leasers. Let's say Masterworks knows they can get $1 million at auction, but have a $900,000 offer privately. It would be in Masterworks' best interest to sell the artwork privately and collect the 20% fee, putting more money in Masterworks' pockets at the expense of investors. After the vesting period, Masterworks can sell or dump shares on the secondhand market. Affiliate and board members can as well. Since the art market is unregulated like crypto, they can pump and dump and manipulate the market just like crypto. Huge reliance on Scott Lynn, who has complete control over all five masterwork entities. Just like SBF, you need to trust Scott Lynn will do the right thing because there is no one there to put him in check. Legally not held liable for actions taken that can hurt investors. Now. All of these things are just something I see as potential risks and concerns of mine. By no means am I saying they are happening or are going to. It's just they can. And the way the world is, you have to assume the unexpected can and will happen. Another thing I wanted to talk about is this section in the prospectus right here. The Lynn Family Trust 001 owns approximately 82% of the membership interest of Masterworks LLC. Mr. Lin is the Chief Executive Officer of Masterworks LLC and Masterworks Administrative Services LLC. By contract, Mr. Lin has the power to vote 100% of the membership interest beneficially owned by the trust and controls Masterworks. No other person beneficially owns 10% or more of the voting membership interest of Masterworks LLC or any of its subsidiaries. 
So I mentioned earlier that Scott Lynn ended up selling Masterworks a few years back to the Lynn Family Trust. As we all know, putting your assets in a trust is a very good way to shield yourself from liability. So this is just one other thing investors should know that Scott Lynn is doing to shield himself from liability in the event things hit the fan. And I bring this up because Scott Lynn is by far my biggest concern. Now, I'm not saying he's a scammer or a crook or a bad person or anything like that. I'm just saying that Masterworks has zero employees and solely relies on Scott Lynn for everything. It would be nice to see other investors, you know, maybe knowing how Scott's getting this money. Is he borrowing from banks to get the loan? Is he borrowing against artwork? You really have no idea what this man is doing, and he runs the show all by himself. You know, he's basically controlling 200 and what is it, 27 pieces of art all by himself right now. And we all know he's an avid art collector. The prospectus says there can be conflicts of interest. It just seems like quite a lot. Everyone puts their faith in SBF, kaboom. Everyone puts their faith in Machinsky, kaboom. Everyone puts their faith in the Winklevi twins, kaboom. Everyone puts their faith in Silbert, kaboom. As we've seen, putting hope in one person generally has been ending bad this last year or two. And now you might be saying, okay, well, Masterworks, they're not a bunch of crypto bros. Well, I'm just going to leave this press release right here because Masterworks initially advertised themselves as the first blockchain platform for public to invest in iconic works of art. And the last thing I want to talk about is something the Plain Bagel touched on. And this is just purely my speculation as well as his. But once again, I do tend to agree. And it goes back to Masterworks returns that they've already filed. When you read their older prospectuses, they talk about this 10-year plan. So these paintings that they bought in 2020, according to their prospectus, they had no intentions of selling until 2030. So I question whether they sold some of these paintings for publicity, or if because they wanted to actually make investors money. You know, it's hard to advertise and get people to buy into hundreds of offerings of expensive works of art. If you don't kind of have a resume, you know, where you can show returns and what you've been getting. The last couple of years, you know, with these low interest rates, it's been a huge mega pump environment. Everything became overpriced. Going forward, if we have the rest of the decade as high interest rates, I highly doubt Masterworks is going to be able to get this kind of annualized return. So between the deceptive marketing, deluding customers when they think the art actually costs $20 per share when it doesn't, using the griftiest of grifty influencers, claiming to be a blockchain company, one dude having sole control over everything, Homeboy all jittery shaking like something was up in that Echoes interview. The fact that influencers won't even read a prospectus, but will defend these people tooth and nail? Like, bro, how can you defend this thing and not even know that Masterworks is five separate entities? How could you not know that the artwork's actually owned by a title company in the Cayman Islands? I mean, look at what happens with these Cayman companies. They're generally shady crypto companies and shady gambling companies. But Masterworks is going to be the one good non-shady Caymans company that deals with American investors, right? I wish there was an instrument for me to short this thing to the ground, because I think that would be a much better investment than actually investing in the art. So I don't think Masterwork is a Ponzi scheme. I think it's absurdly high risk for very little reward when you look at other options available on the market. I mean, you've just had the stock market fall by like 50%. There's so many good stocks you can buy right now that if you just hold for a few years, you're going to double your money. So that's all I got for this one. Please like and subscribe if you learned something or enjoyed the content. Thanks again for watching.